welcome back to the Off Grid family. Today I'm going to be working on something I've wanted to do for quite some time. If you're anything like me, you've got a list of bits and bobs that if you, you can acquire, you can make some out of. And one of them was a wind turbine out of a ceiling fan. And um, I just so happened, a friend of mine just said to me, you know, I've got this old ceiling fan, don't want it. Do you want it for parts? And I was like, yes, please. And now I, I can actually try and hopefully make a wind turbine out of it. So if you'd like to follow along with me, let's get on. Okay, so I'm going to start off by taking apart the bits that, you know, that I don't need. Um, and I've never taken one of these apart before, so it's sort of like all a... It's going to be like anything else I take apart. Just one screw at a time, see how I get on. So first I'm going to try and take these fan blades off. Now I keep all the nuts and bolts I take apart because they do tend to come in really handy. Okay, that's the, the fans off, um, well, the fan blades, sorry. And these metal um, things here are slanted slightly, obviously, to give the fans their shape. If I can move them, because I only want three of them, um, it cuts down on wobble if you have three. That's why most um, of these things, don't, uh, most wind turbines don't have four. Um, basically, it would be ideal if you could have a wind turbine with just one. Because, it, yeah, long story. But anyway. Um, so if I can move these to a certain place, it might actually work in my favour. But at the moment, there are four of them. I can't have. There's no point in me having one here, one here, and one here, and one not here. We'd have tr troubles. I'm not going to go into it all. But um, okay, I want to start slowly, just taking bits off that we don't need on here. See if we can actually take this apart with some ease. Sometimes these are easy to take apart. I've seen a lot of people take these things apart. And I've noticed that like 50% of them are quite easy, and then the other 50% are just a nightmare. Um, there you go. And an explosion. Right. I'm not chucking anything away I take apart, I take off, well I don't anyway, but I mean, I'm not putting it anywhere yet until I know exactly what I need to make this wind turbine, because it's all designed specifically to fit on here, so it might be something I definitely need, you know? Like with everything, I'm just slowly taking screws off until we can get to the bits we want. I didn't expect that bit to be removable. I was I thought that would went all the way down the shaft. Hilarious. Right. Okay, I'm gonna start taking these screws off around the actual bulb now. Or well the lamp, sorry. When unscrewing these, especially with even if I'd done this a hundred times, which I obviously haven't, but um, you just don't know what they're unscrewing because it just seems to be I'll unscrew this now. And then it'll be this bit that comes off. It just seems to be completely counterintuitive what bit I'm unscrewing. I can feel this bit behind it getting looser. Yeah, so we are getting the lamp off. Or the lampshade, anyway. Imagine having to unscrew these screws just to get the change the bulb. At the moment, I don't want to take any of the electronics out of the way, so we'll leave it all there. Let's get this screw. Uh, let's get the switch off. I'm 
sure you all know I like my different and weird switches so this will obviously be something I keep and find a use for. I know it's not too different, we've all seen pull light switches but it's quite a nice one. Let me zoom you in. I don't know how interested you, you'd be but you know. I like that the, the chain goes into the actual switch. Yeah, anyway. Right, I might make myself look like a complete and utter plonker here, but it doesn't look like you can get in to change the bulb. These are actually um, riveted in, and I can't see any other way of being able to unscrew that. One step closer to the grand prize. Right, I'm going to detangle this mess, cutting bits I don't want off, and I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to get this nut off now, and I'll do that off camera, because I guarantee there's going to be a lot of swearing with that one. Okay, that actually came off really, really easily. I was quite impressed. Um, I did think there'd be a lot more shouting and profanity. So what I need to do now is I'm going to take these off. And then I'm going to unscrew this side and then this side. And I'm hoping it will just come apart. Sometimes they do, as I say, sometimes they don't. So I'll start this side. Now as you'll see I'm trying to keep the screws apart so when I do put this back together I know which ones I actually do need and which ones I don't. Let's just see if anything's worked loose from that. Oh, I'll see. That comes off too. Okay, that's all the screws out and now I'm going to have to start fighting to try and get this apart. Unfortunately, it's not one of the ones that come apart very easily. Okay, what I need to do now is take this bit out. I'm hoping it's just pressure fit in there, but I'm not sure. Basically, I want to be able to get magnets in in a second. Well, in a little while, I need to get the magnets first. Um, so I'm going to try and get this out. I'm going to do this off camera because I'm going to just use pressure to try and push up and under, and I need to connect it to my vice and everything. And I don't, I can't get that with the camera. I can, but it would mean clearing stuff up, and I can't be bothered. I will, however, explain how easy or hard it actually was when I get back. Okay, you joined me halfway through. I wasn't recording because I genuinely didn't know if I could do this, but I actually managed to get this off virtually. All I did, um, let me just show you what this bit is, I mean. This bit around the, the edge. I know it's got a name, I just can't remember it offhand, and you think I would because I love motors, but no, I can't. Um, I use brute force, I just snapped one off and then I just started poking and prodding and pulling them and it just started to come out so I'm just going to keep pulling and get it out hopefully. I shouldn't have stopped. Whew. 
There it is. Now, let's see if we've damaged this. Made it wobble a bit. Perfect. It's a tiny bit wobbly. Nothing we can't handle. Right, now first test with some magnets. I've only got tiny, tiny magnets at the moment. I'll set them up and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, these are the only magnets I've got. Look, two lots. That's all I've got at the moment. Um, but I'm going to get some, I'm going to recycle some batteries, um, some magnets in just a sec. And we'll be able to see if... If they'll work but I'm just gonna try this out I'll, ex I'll explain exactly why I'm connecting it to what wires later this is purely a test Let's wrap that around there I'm not touching anything else it does sound like it's touching there I'm going to go see if we've got any more magnets to see if we can get a bit more of a noticeable reaction. These are smaller magnets. They'll, you know, they'll work to a degree. Right. Okay. So now I've got these big-ish ones, like bigger than these tiny ones. And I'll tell you now, just with those tiny, tiny magnets. We're getting about two volts. Nothing major, nothing amazing, but it's better than nothing at the moment. Okay, I was able to get three volts, but these are literally tiny, tiny, tiny magnets. Let's, rip, let's get some bigger ones, shall we? Okay, I'm gonna leave it there for today, um, but tomorrow I would like to see if I can source some free neodymium magnets, see how they work, if they work at all, um, and we'll get, hopefully, a lot more of the project done. Um, there will be some 3D printing for this project as well, but I'll um, send you over to my website where you can see all the bits that you might need. Thanks for watching, see you again soon, bye.